Well, ahoy there. That was cheesy, let's start again. You're about to leave for a cruise. Maybe it's your first one, maybe it's your fifth one, maybe it's your 30th one. I am here to tell you what I think are some things that I think that you might want to pack for your cruise, some of which you might not have thought of. I'm not gonna dwell too much on clothing and different items like that just because that's a whole other video and I'm a serial overpacker. So this is gonna be more focused on just items that you may or may not have known that you might want or need on your next cruise. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Everything that I will share in this video will be linked right down in the description box in order of appearance. So if you want to pick one up before your voyage, you can do so. Let's get right into it. I don't know what that accent was. First item that I think you might want to pack are some metal hooks. Now, don't know if you know this, but ship cr cruise ship walls are metal. So you can have these fun little metal hooks to just pop right on the wall of your cabin and bam, you have instantly more storage to hang things like hats, like jackets, whatever other odds and ends that you wanna just get up off the floor. Maybe you don't have room for them in the small wardrobe that they supply for you in your cabin. These are the answer. Now they come in a bunch of different strengths. These ones that I have are pretty good, but they can't really handle anything that's too heavy. So I will link a couple links down below for different options, but I love these because when I come home, I, I use them on my fridge, I use them in my bathroom, so they definitely have multiple uses, but on a cruise ship, having some metal hooks that are magnetic, that stick to your walls, just will really increase your ability to keep yourself organized and hung up and off the floor. It goes without saying that when you're at sea, you could get seasick. And so one thing that you definitely don't want to leave your home and get on a cruise ship without is just something to make sure that if you do get seasick, you have measures in place to mitigate that. So there's three different things that you can go with. First are these sea bands. They're basically just, they're little bracelets that you pop onto both wrists. These little plastic uh, pieces in the bracelet. Uh, are supposed to hit at a certain pressure point on your wrist and that is supposed to help with seasickness. I've tried these before and they work pretty well in my experience, but I don't always just love to have these on. Just, it's not the cutest. I mean, if you, as far as cuteness goes, these pink camo looking ones are probably as cute as they're gonna get, but still it can ruin the fit. You know what I mean? So another thing that I'm grabbing for this voyage, which I left in the other room, but these patches that you can put on behind your ear and then if you need it, you can put it on behind your ear and on your stomach and they're supposed to help with seasickness and they're a lot more subtle. You don't really notice them as much as you would these bands. So if you want something that's not gonna ruin your outfit or just look kind of like eh, the patches may be the way to go and hopefully those work really well. I've heard great things about them. I've just never personally used them myself. You can also go with good old fashioned Dramamine or motion sickness uh, relief supplements. This one I never actually needed on my last voyage, so it still hasn't been opened, but it's a relief for nausea, dizziness, due to motion sickness, car sickness, or seasickness. So I'm gonna have these on hand for me as well, um, just in case I need them. And these are supposed to be non-drowsy. So make sure if you're gonna go with the supplement version that you look for something that isn't going to make you sleepy because I don't know about you, but I don't wanna sleep through my cruise. The next thing you might need for something that ails you might not be seasickness, but a hangover. I mean, been there, done that. It's a cruise you're gonna be having a good time if you're a person who drinks. So naturally you may have a hangover and nothing is worse than having a hangover on your vacation. So a couple things you can do. I grabbed these little triple hydration packets. This is just the Walgreens brand for liquid IV. Save a couple bucks. I'm sure it's probably the same thing. But these are great because they hydrate you a lot faster than just a glass of water will so that you can get yourself onto the pathway back to being your 100% self on vacation. Um, they have different flavors. This is the lemon lime flavor. They're really easy. You just take them, open up the packet, drop it into your water, let it dissolve and drink it. And you can get back to living your life, hopefully hangover free. The other thing that I think is really interesting that I've tried are these morning recovery little bottles. So these are from more labs and you're supposed to drink this before you go to bed on the night that you were drinking. So the thing about this is usually if I've drank enough that I'm gonna have a hangover, I'm not really thinking about doing something, you know, to help myself the next day by the time I go to bed, let's be honest. So if you can manage 
to drink one of these and remember to do it, they're helpful. It has helped when I have tried it. Um, these are great. They are, they say to consume while drinking or up to one hour after your last drink. Engineered to help you bounce back after drinking with liver boosting DHM, uh, electrolytes, vitamin B complex, milk thistle, and more to support your body. One thing you definitely don't want to leave without when you go on a cruise is sunscreen. Now, this is not sponsored, but Super Goop is me and my husband's favorite sunscreen brand for our face. I always use a different sunscreen on my face than my body. I'm sure I'm not alone in that. I want a better, more powerful, nicer sunscreen going on my face. Now, the Unseen sunscreen is great for men or women. I think it is just a great facial sunscreen. It is SPF 40 broad spectrum sunscreen. It is water and sweat resistant. Now, the thing I love about this one, the unseen sunscreen is that it is unseen. It doesn't, it's not white. It doesn't come out of the tube like white. And then like you put it on your skin, you have to keep rubbing it in to get the white color to go away. No, this is like this clear solution. It goes on your face. It feels heavenly when you're putting it on. Okay. And then the other benefit that it has is it just kind of blurs your pores. It kind of makes your skin look slightly better, which is fantastic. If you're a man or a woman who doesn't want their skin to look better. Am I right? But if you are a person who wears makeup, I also love using this as like a daily makeup primer. It is fantastic for that too. So this is just a great thing to have, but definitely on a cruise. Now, I recently tried their Glow Screen, which is a different formulation. It's also broad spectrum SPF 40, but instead of it being like a matte finish when you put it on, this one is like glowy. This one is meant to sort of make your skin look, you know, dewy and glowy. Yeah, there we go. Definitely has a different consistency. Um, so it depends on what you want. In the summertime, sometimes I like to use this because I wanna have that like glowy summer glow look and that's what this will give you. For the body, my husband is a little bit bougier than me when it comes to products sometimes, believe it or not. But he loves this Hamptons Sun SPF 50 continuous mist sunscreen. So this is great for the rest of you, right? And what's great about this one is it's reef safe, which don't know if you know this, but a lot of sunscreens out there are not good for our coral reefs and it's gonna be pretty bad if all the coral reefs die. So if you can splurge on a nicer sunscreen that is reef safe, that is great to do if, if it's within your budget to do so. But this is a little bit pricier sunscreen, but it's really nice. It goes on super nice. It doesn't have like that weird sunscreen smell, which is a huge bonus. Um, and it's broad spectrum SPF. It is oxybenzone and oxy octanizate free. And it's water resistant for up to 80 minutes. So a little bit of a splurge, but a really good high quality sunscreen right here. The last thing that I'm gonna say about sunscreen is mostly for the ladies when you have makeup on. Of course, when you put your sunscreen on before your makeup, we all know that doesn't technically last all day. So it's good to have something on hand to reapply your face sunscreen without ruining your beat. You know what I mean? And so I love this Kate Somerville uh, SPF 50 setting spray. I carry this in my bag with me um, when we go on excursions or get off the ship so that I can make sure to like throughout the day to, you know, spray my face with this lovely setting spray. It also helps to keep the makeup in place. So it's doing double duty, but it's also protecting your face. They have another one on Amazon that is like a mineral sunscreen powder that I will also link that I've heard is amazing. And I definitely want to try that once I run out of this, because that's another thing. It's just basically like a face powder that you can just powder your face as if you were using regular powder, but this one has SPF in it. So it's really, really important to keep reapplying your sunscreen as the day goes on, especially on your face, because this is the money maker. You know what I mean? Another thing you might want to bring with you is aloe vera, because inevitably sometimes sunburns can happen and they're very uncomfortable. So having aloe to sort of soothe your irritated skin after a sunburn is something that you may really be thankful that you remember to bring on your cruise. So something to think about if you are a little bit more prone to sunburns. So this one's a fun one, more for if you're going somewhere tropical, you know you're gonna be in the water or going maybe on some snorkeling excursions or excursions that involve being on a boat. Um, an underwater housing for your smartphone. So this is uh, from Amazon, it was about $60 I wanna say, and I've used this several times. I used it when we went to the Florida Keys last spring for a snorkeling excursion and it is fantastic. So it's a completely sealed watertight housing for your smartphone so that you can take pictures and videos 
underwater, which I know could be very important to some people, especially me, because you know, you want to share all the fun aspects of your vacation on social media and various places and underwater pictures are pretty cool. So you basically lock your phone up into this housing. It comes with like a little pry apart tool that you have to use to open it. Otherwise, like you literally cannot open it with your fingers. It will not. So um, it's partially closed. So I'm going to leave it that way, but it basically splits in half. You put your phone in there. The camera side goes here and then um, you've got a wrist strap so that you can attach it to your wrist to make sure that you don't lose your phone in the water. And then it also has this camera shutter button up here that's supposed to release your camera. But this actually, you can use your phone completely while it's in here. Like you can still touch things and it will still function, which is really cool. So something to think about if you are into, you know, create, uh, capturing every aspect of your trip. I also would recommend some of these phone cases that you can get a lot more cheaply. They're just better for if you're going to be around water and you want to make sure that your water doesn't get on your phone. Like if you are going out on a smaller boat to go do an excursion, they're great to sort of just protect your phone while you're in those activities to make sure that, you know, nothing bad happens. So I will link those also because I think those are really great too. Not necessarily for taking pictures in because I don't think the picture quality would be very good in those more just like a protection aspect for like when you're on a little on the boat or around the pool on the beach etc. I always recommend to bring a water bottle your own refillable water bottle when you go on a cruise so that you can just fill up your water bottle and keep hydrated while you're on the ship but taking it a step further the collapsible water bottle so Nate my husband discovered this last year when we went on our Virgin Voyages cruise in the Mediterranean and bought this and this is so clutch so there's so many different collapsible water bottles out there that are fantastic. Um, but this one is good because, you know, once it is finished, instead of having to carry around like a clunky water bottle for the rest of the day until you find water again, you can just roll it up, stick a rubber band around it, and it's so much more compact and less annoying to have to carry around after it's empty. It also comes with this little clip, so you can clip it to your bag, clip it to your belt loop, whatever. Uh, so that you can be hands-free with it. And it's great. It doesn't fit a whole lot of water, but we found it was just perfect amount for when we were out doing excursions. You know, a lot of times you can find places to refill your water. So really handy to have, super easy and hassle-free to deal with it. This might be a little bit more of a niche thing, but maybe one of these little wine tumblers. I'm definitely gonna bring this for when we're in our cabin. You are allowed on most cruises to bring two bottles of wine per cabin. So instead of using the water glasses that they give you in the room to drink water out of and pour wine in them, probably gonna bring this just to be able to enjoy my wine and keep my water glass clean so I can use that for drinking water. Now this is something you may not think of, but if you're someone who is prone to being warm a lot, you might consider bringing a small portable fan for your cabin. I don't know, depending on where you're going, it could get warm. Maybe the air conditioning in your room doesn't really work to your personal liking. It never hurts to have a fan. This one is fabulous because it is a wireless fan and you can recharge it via the USB-C port it has on the back. And it's easy to carry around. It's pretty compact and it's pretty powerful for how big it is. I also would recommend, especially if you're going somewhere like super humid and hot, maybe one of those like neck fans that goes around the back of your neck. It's like a, your own personal little fan. I've seen people wear them um, before. I don't have one personally, but I'll link one because I think that could also be a fantastic option if you're just somebody who gets hot easily. You know, just trying to make yourself as comfortable as possible, especially when you're going somewhere hot and humid is so key. We got to talk about it. The bathroom in your cabin can get kind of gross when you're sharing with somebody. Everybody goes number two. It's a fact of life. And sometimes it doesn't smell very good. So bringing along some poopery for your cabin bathroom is probably a smart thing to do so that, you know, keeps things a little bit more comfortable, a little bit less stinky when you're living in such tight quarters with another person. I know I personally, me and my husband, have separate bathrooms in our home. So when we're on a cruise, having the same bathroom that's very small, that's literally so close to just the cabin living space is a lot. And this comes in handy. So, you know, kind of gross, but let's be realistic. Nobody wants to smell that. So this will help with that unpleasantness. 
I also highly recommend when you go on a cruise to have a hanging toiletry case. I mean, I think these are great for traveling in general. This one is my husband's that he got from AER last year. So I'm going to show his because mine is like not available anymore, but I'll link tons of fun options for this that are, you know, more masculine to more cute and feminine in the description box. But basically the premise is it has a hook that you can hang from your cab, your bathroom cabin door and some pockets to keep everything organized. And when you're done, it just zips up and goes into your suitcase. This is just not only good for a cruise, but anywhere you could go because again, you can hang this in your hotel bathroom when you travel. It still gives the same purpose, but especially on a cruise when bathroom space is pretty small, your counter space is very limited. It's really good to just keep as much stuff off your bathroom counter space as possible to make it feel less cluttered. And these are great for that because you can keep most of your, you know, products here rather than, you know, having them crowd your bathroom space. Some of mine are charging right now because we're leaving tomorrow, but definitely recommend having a portable phone charger with you. When you're walking around on the ship all day, maybe you're out in the port enjoying an excursion or exploring, you're going to be on your phone a lot. I'm, I'm guessing. I mean, I know I will be because I'm going to be taking pictures and videos and that kind of activity on your phone can drain your battery and it sucks when your battery dies and you don't have any access to charging it. So just carrying a portable charger with you is such a smart thing to do. Even when you're on the ship and they do have like plugs and stuff around, it's just so annoying in my opinion to have to like go to the wall and plug it in. Whereas when you have your own portable phone charger, you can just charge your phone wherever you are on the ship. You don't have to get up from your nice lounge chair and go seek one out. So I think it's just a smart thing to have on any trip that you could go on, but definitely on a cruise because we all know we're going to, we're going to be using those cameras a lot and they take up some energy. I can't tell I'm very pale and I am always trying to protect my face, especially my face from the sun because we're trying to keep this, you know, flawless as long as possible. So bringing a hat with you on a cruise is something I highly recommend. A wide brim hat that covers your face sufficiently. This one I found on Amazon and I love because you can have your hair pulled up like in a bun on top of your head and still wear this. You could have your hair in a ponytail and still wear this. Um, it doesn't limit you as to your hairstyle essentially. And I also really like that it is pretty wide brim. So, I mean, it's, it's got some good protection for me here and it also can be adjusted to your head. You can tie the back to sort of fit your own head and secure it that way. I have also found that the aspect of this that is really great is that it's packable so you can just roll it up and it fits so easily in your suitcase without getting smushed or misshapen like a lot of other more traditional wide brim hats can do. So this is the clutch. I always take this with me when I go on a cruise. Of course, if you're more into the fashionable types of wide brim hats, I just got this one from Lack of Color and I love it. Now, the thing that I think makes this great for a cruise is the fact that it has a chin strap. I think that's really clutch if you're gonna go with a hat like this because these kind of hats can just, I mean, depending on the breeze on the decks, you know, one gust and a hat like this is like lost at sea forever. You'll never see it again. Man overboard. Having a chin strap so that you can secure it to your head when the breeze picks up is, it's a must. Especially if you're gonna be doing any excursions where you're gonna be on a smaller boat, um, like a speedboat or anything, those go fast and they are windy as hell. So you definitely, I would recommend looking into a wide brim hat that has some sort of secure chin strap to keep it from flying away from you. This is by no means a must, but something that you may enjoy and it could bring some, a fuller experience to your cruise while you're at sea is a pair of binoculars. You never know what you could see out there in the water. You could see some dolphins, you could see a whale, you could see birds, you could see land. <laughs> but binoculars are fun if you are into looking out and seeing what's out there. And these are great because they came with a little tripod. You can hook your phone, um, like you can stand your phone, I guess, right up next to one of the binoculars and capture pictures and video of what your binoculars see, kind of like a little telephoto lens. So my husband got these because he is excited to use them. So you may also find that a pair of binoculars will enhance the experience of your cruise. Another thing that definitely isn't like a must, but maybe might be right for your personal cruise experience is a waterproof dry bag. If you know when you go on cruises, you like to go on excursions that involve being 
in a boat, going and snorkeling, going kayaking, paddle surfing, all those kind of water related activities, but you want to be able to bring certain valuables with you that you do not want to get wet, then a waterproof dry bag will help protect all those things and give you the security and peace of mind when you go out and do those little adventures to know that your stuff is safe and it will stay dry. So this is something I discovered a couple summers ago and it's life changing and that is towel clips. These are so fun. They're little flamingos. Um, but you can get ones that are more basic and less, you know, crazy. But one thing that is the clutch thing to do on a cruise when you want to have a pool day is to go out and put your towel out on your chair and kind of like save your chair. And a lot of times when you just leave a towel, people can be like, oh, they're probably not coming back and maybe move your towel. If you clip your towel to your chair with these, it leaves a lot less ambiguity. And also these are great because it just holds your towel up on your lounge chair so many times. I know it's happened to all of us. You'll be on your lounge chair and your towel will just like fall down your back, you know, it's annoying. These keep your towel secured no matter the wind or you moving around. They're really, really good to have and they're very inexpensive and easy to pack in your suitcase. I don't have any of this. I wish I had bought some in time, but I'm out of time. And that is wrinkle release spray. So you can't bring like irons and all that crazy stuff on cruises, but you might want your stuff to like not be wrinkly, right? So they, they make towel release sprays. So you can spray it on your clothes. It helps to get all the kinks out without the need for using a heat tool which you're not allowed to bring on a cruise. So it might be a good way to save some money because yes, they do usually have like dry cleaning and pressing on the ship, but that usually comes at an additional cost. So this is an awesome way to get those kinks out of your pieces after you've unpacked them from your suitcase. Another little tip that's free is you could hang your, your wrinkled item in the bathroom with the door shut while you're showering and the steam will also help too make some wrinkles fall out. Little pro tip. One other girly thing that I'm going to say is regarding your hair. If you're going on a cruise somewhere that is it's a humid climate, I know my hair gets really frizzy and it's not cute. This Color Wild Dream Cut Spray is one of my absolute favorite hair products of all time, but I always pack it with me when I go somewhere humid because basically what it is, is you put it on your hair when it's wet, after you get out of the shower, and then you have to heat style your hair. So you have to blow it dry to activate it, but essentially it coats your hair, protects it from humidity, it protects it from frizz, and it lasts for three shampoos. So you can do it one time and then wash your hair three more times and you're still gonna see the effects of that protection. I love this stuff. It is a holy grail product for me. Um, they also make a version for people with curly hair and I've had my curly hair friends try it and they also love it and swear by it. So I will link both versions down in the description box. I wish I had some time to go into all the clothing and accessories that I would bring on a cruise, but she's out of time because she's got to make it to her spray tan appointment so that she doesn't look like a ghost on her cruise. And I don't know why I'm talking about myself in the third person. I'm gonna run and do that. If you're interested in Virgin Voyages, which is the cruise I'm about to go on, I made this video explaining everything that I think you should know about it here. So check that one out next. Stay tuned because I will have a whole video of outfit ideas and different clothing items to pack for a cruise coming very, very soon. I will put that over here when it's ready. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe for more fun fashion and travel content like this one. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you all on the next video after I get back from this cruise. <laughs> Bye.